cryptanalysis um, uh, in order to prevent somebody from uh, performing cryptanalysis against us, <clears throat> we are wanting to take certain precautions. And, and these precautions are basically um, principles for our protection, protecting our communications. So we will have, uh, for example, uh, one of the uh, best protection principles is, is to hide repeated patterns in plain text. Um, there, you know, we, we've gone over this before. Um, it's instructive to uh, uh, take, for example, uh, do, a, do an image search. You should be able to find it on uh, the Internet. Um, a graphic which shows the, uh, the little Linux penguin symbol, um, the original image, and then a, an image which has been encrypted with DES, the Data Encryption Standard, but in electronic codebook form. So, of course, each, uh, uh, you know, identical pieces of, of uh, the, the original file are going to produce, origin, you know, identical pieces of uh, cryptographic text. And as a matter of fact, you, you know, you look at this image and it, uh, you can clearly see um, you know, it's not the original, the colors are wrong, uh, so on and so forth, but the, you know, the, the basic outline of the image is still there. Um, and, you know, this is, this is one thing that can happen. Uh, another thing that can happen when you are uh, dealing, when you find in, in ciphertext that you get repeating patterns, that you get the same blocks of... Um, uh, ciphertext, you know, the, the original blocks of plain text are the same, and, and, you know, most obvious guess for something like that is there's a string of zeros or a string of ones, and so you can start trying to attack the key on that basis. <clears throat> you know, what, it, what is a key which, uh, from a string of zeros or a string of ones, is going to produce the ciphertext repeated patterns that we see. Now, in addition, um, we have the instructive story of Lieutenant Jaeger, Jaeger probably, Lieutenant Jaeger. Um, in, uh, this was in the First World War. Um, now, in, in the First World War, they were still using uh, like code books. Um, and as a matter of fact, uh, you know, there, there was still a fair amount of it going on uh, during the Second World War. But this was in the First World War, um, and the uh, code discipline, uh, as I say, you know, encrypt properly or don't encrypt at all. Um, and uh, the German high command was realizing that, yes, um, people were being sloppy in using uh, encryption and... Uh, therefore, the enemy uh, was able to to break the codes, find keys, etc., etc. So, uh, Lieutenant Jaeger was detailed to fix this, and and he he uh, understood uh, cryptography. I understood uh, what uh, was needed to enforce proper discipline and so he sent out uh, you know a series of messages uh, detailing the proper instructions um, noting uh, lapses of discipline etc etc so yeah you know lots of orders coming from Lieutenant Jaeger the problem here is that there wasn't a symbol in the code books for his name. And so 
every time he sent an order in order to verify that the order was from him and was to be followed and was, you know, an appropriate order and should be paid attention to, his name had to be spelled out letter by letter. And of course it was the same every time. So it was a known plain text. And the allies used it as such. They, uh, you know, their uh, cryptanalysts uh, started looking for patterns that indicated that yes, you know, this was yet another order from Lieutenant Jaeger. Uh, they were <laughs> truly sorry to see him go when when he was reassigned somewhere else, and and uh, this because you know it, it gave them a pattern that they knew was was going to be uh, used in in a bunch of different messages, and and gave them something to to work on in in terms of breaking and and finding the keys for the orders that he was generating. Um, so. Again, you know, this is this is one of the principles and, and one of the most important principles. Uh, just you know, disguise your uh, your plain text. Uh, make sure you don't have repeated patterns. Now, you know, we've got um, the other modes, the you know, the chaining modes um, that would uh, obviate this pattern, and that's that's part of the reason for those modes and for the need for correction, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But the, um, uh, the, you know, there are other uh, ways of dealing with it. There are, you know, various means of achieving this particular principle. For example, when you are encrypting data and compressing it, compress it first because uh, compressed data, well, you know, looks pretty um, encrypted uh, right from the get-go there. But in addition, um, uh, encrypted material, data, uh, looks pretty random. And so it doesn't compress worth the darn. So do the compression first. And number one, you know, that gives you compression. Number two, it hides repeated patterns because that is part of what uh, compression does is is to say okay you know we've got a bunch of repeating patterns this is the pattern and it repeats x number of times and and that reduces the amount of data that we've got uh, quite considerably